Well, good afternoon, everybody. Yes, I think Phil and I are about a thousand miles from home. But actually, are we a long way from home? I don't think so. We're with family. Brothers and sisters in Christ. We are co-citizens of heaven. Heaven is our home. And we are seated in heaven. I want to thank you for your welcome. And to be reacquainted with you from last October. <laughs> if you have your Bible with you, I would like you to have John chapter 3. <coughs> We're also going to refer to other scriptures. But we may not read them out. You know, these days there are lots of things we can have instead of Jesus. There are lots of alternatives to Christ. This is the Antichrist spirit. Antichrist doesn't just mean against Christ. It also means instead of Christ. Alongside and an alternative to Christ. And it's very subtle and seductive. And it can even be woven in to our faith. Which distances us from our pure faith. In one of Paul's letters, he refers to Antichrist in the temple of God. God is showing us how to be intercessors. And we have realized that includes a role as watchmen. You know, every day you choose between the two trees. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, man's wisdom. Or the tree of life. Jesus only. Now, you know, John chapter 3 is a very famous chapter. <coughs> Jesus is speaking with Nicodemus, as you know. He's making it clear that he came to bring us back to the Father, to restore us to God. He said many amazing things about being born again, about the Holy Spirit who is like the wind. But I want to focus on verse 14. Just let me check before you read it. Yes, verse 14. I think it's important because he said what he was doing was just like what Moses did with the serpent on the pole in the wilderness. It was just like that. 
It's also just before John chapter 3 verse 16, one of the most famous verses in scripture. What is Jesus saying here? Let me just tell you briefly the story from Numbers chapter 21. We don't need to turn uh -huh. to it. The people had been brought out of Egypt. And now they were starting to look over their shoulder back to Egypt. Have you brought us here to die, Moses? <laughs> We're hungry and we hate this bread. The very bread God had given them every day. It's amazing how ungrateful they were. Yes. And the consequence was God sent fiery serpents to bite the people who were complaining. You know the story, don't you? I suppose they were fiery serpents because of the poison that went rushing through the body. It felt like fire. The poison was like burning. And we see the people repenting. Oh, we're so sorry, Moses. Please, please ask God to take this away. And then God did something very, very unusual. Moses made another serpent. And he put it up on a pole. On a, on a stake. And all the people had to do was look at it. All they had to do, just look at it. They had to look at the image of the very thing that had harmed them. To look at the very thing that had poisoned, sent poison through their bodies. The very thing that had brought death. So what was the message Jesus was giving in John chapter 3? Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us that we would be healed. In fact, we would become the righteousness of God. Wow! <laughs> That's even more miraculous than what God did in the desert. Do you know, because of his sacrifice, God now treats me as if I have the life of Jesus already. And he's been punished for my sin. I know we have a few mathematicians and econ economists in the room. So excuse me if I get this slightly wrong. But it reminds me in some way of how two negatives makes a positive. This may, this may not be exactly like that, but it reminds me of it. Think about it. Be because Jesus was lifted up on that cross, 
Captivity has been taken captive. Captivity, when I am a captive, when I am trapped. The cross for, for us is the rejection of rejection. Yeah. Yeah. It is the separation from separation. We're separated from separation. It is the limiting of all limitations. Because of the cross, it is the binding of all bondage. It is the death of death for us. The people in the desert simply had to look at the serpent. What did Jesus say? If you read on in this chapter, we find out. He who believes. He who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting, eternal life. Just believe in him. Believe who he says he is. Not your own idea of Jesus. Not what the movies or the media say about Jesus. Believe who Jesus says he is. Just believe. A couple of verses later, he says, this is what condemnation is. That people did not believe. This is our faith, brothers and sisters, pure and simple. So why do we complicate it? Why do we allow extras to come in? We even allow alternatives to this to come in. Let's just go back to the fiery serpent on the pole in the desert. When the people, when the people were healed, there was great rejoicing, great thanksgiving, God has forgiven us. This is a special day. Let's never forget this day. Now, if you fast forward nearly a thousand years, the people are now in the land that was promised to them. The people have now arrived and are living. But many of you will know they were going after the gods of the nations around them. We read in Second Kings. They stiffened their necks. Their necks, they stiffen their necks, they make their necks hard. Just, just like the necks of their fathers who would not believe the Lord. They rejected all of God's commands and they were invaded by the Assyrians for many years. And in the middle of all this, God raised up a great king. Some scriptures say there was no king like him. Hezekiah became king of Judah. 
And he started to clean up the place. To clean up everything the people had done. He tore down the idol worship. Statues to the goddess Asherah. The goddess, her name was Asherah. And all the high places of pagan And then it says, Hezekiah broke in pieces broke into pieces something they called the, head, um, the Nehushtan. And the, do you know what the Nehushtan was? It was a bronze serpent. It was a bronze serpent. And they had kept it for nearly a thousand years or they'd made a replica. And along with all the other gods, they believed that this image of a serpent had strange magical powers. It had become an idol. God had graciously healed them when they repented and looked at the fiery serpent. But now, now it had become an idol, a relic, a superstition. And this king, Hezekiah, which scripture says there was no other king like him. It describes how he held on to the Lord. He held on, he held fast to the Lord. He clung to God. And he did not depart from following him. Hezekiah knew the difference between the fake and the real thing. <coughs> it says the Lord was with him and prospered him in everything he did. And everywhere he went. That's what I want, do you? God wants us all to have a prosperous soul. In everything we do. Are we clinging only to him? Only following him? Or are there other things that we are trusting in? Even things that come from our glorious foundation. By the way, as a result of Hezekiah's actions, as a result of what Hezekiah did, the invading Assyrian army failed and Jerusalem was saved. And I was reminding people this week that the king, Sennacherib, was killed. The king of Assyria. By two of his sons who fled to Ararat. Thanks to the faithfulness of that one man in Judah, Hezekiah. Now, I need to say this very carefully. Because like England, Armenia is a country with a wonderful heritage. 
Եվ ինչպես անգլիան, այնպես էլ Հայաստանը շատ լուրջ քրիստոնեական ժառանգություն ունեցող մի երկիր է։ And I say this to encourage us to bring our fellow Armenians and our fellow English people back to Jesus, the real Jesus. Սա ասում եմ, որ թե թե դուք հայաստանցիները, թե մենք անգլիացիները հետ կանք մեր տեր աստծուն Հիսուսին։ Because it's the same for us in England. We have large coaches full of tourists who visit our beautiful cathedrals and monasteries with stained glass windows and all kinds of objects of interest. But you know, it doesn't matter if it's a beautiful, priceless cathedral. It doesn't matter whether it's a very expensive cathedral or a simple monastery carved into the rock. It doesn't matter if it's a cross carved into the rock. Or a cross made of gold with jewels on it. We know that in and of themselves, they are not the real thing. What happened in that place is the real thing. The Spirit of God that moved in that place is the real thing. The rivers of living water and the deep wells in these places, that's the real thing. And I have no faith in anything else. I can't afford to. I want a soul that prospers, a soul that is full of life, full of the life of God. It's the Spirit of God that matters. And just as Jesus said to Nicodemus in our chapter, the wind, God's Spirit, blows wherever He will. You can see the impact he's had. It's shown in our history. But you can't put him in a box. There are deep wells in your country and our country. But as Jesus said to the Samaritan woman in the next chapter, it's not on this mountain or that mountain. That's no longer the important thing. It's my life in a person that matters. Worshipping me in spirit. God's word says that his spirit will be like the waters covering the sea. So you can see how something that was originally beautiful and even used by God can actually become a thing of contempt like the bronze serpent. There are some things that we think help us in our devotion to God. But can actually leave it, lead us into superstition and interrupt our true faith. It could even be a cross. When it be rather than the one who died on the cross. 
It can be a picture or a song or a special place. They may have been helpful to you. But they're not the real thing. Father God has always longed for a personal relationship with you. And the only mediator is Christ Jesus himself. His life and death and resurrection is the intercession. Jesus said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And as watchmen, we have to listen to his words. In the Bible, leaven usually speaks of sin. Leaven is like, it's like yeast that makes the bread. It usually speaks of sin. Because of the way it spreads and infiltrates and contaminates. And as you know, before Passover, Jewish people have to sweep their house clean of all leaven. They're symbolically cleaning their house of sin. We need to identify the sacred and the profane and not mix the two. You know, the leaven of the Pharisees stands for religious legalism and hypocrisy. And today that would... Today that would represent introducing a standard other than Jesus alone. Introducing a set of rules by which we please God. But actually I know he's pleased with me already. I have become his beloved son, in whom he is well pleased. Why introduce more standards I have to attain to? Taking me back into the old covenant. The leaven of the Pharisees can be a human alternative to what God has said. <coughs> you know, the people said to Samuel, we don't want a king. Well, sorry, we don't want a direct communion with God. We want a king like all the other people have. <coughs> and God said to Samuel, don't worry, Samuel. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. <coughs> it can be ritual instead of relationship. Now, the leaven of Herod, Jesus also warned about the leaven of Herod. I think that represents what today we would call political correctness. Political correctness. Um, 
which ultimately is about relativism. Եվ դրանով այդ քաղաքական ռելատիվիզմով մենք հասնում ենք Everything is relative. Կորեկտությամբ մենք գալիս ենք փոփոխալ ամեն ինչ հարաբերական է այս մտքին։ Ամեն ինչ հարաբերական է։ Or if you like there are no absolutes anymore. Այսինքն բացարձակ ճշմարտություն այլևս չկա։ Ultimately it leads to lawlessness. Եվ սրանով էլ անտարբերության ենք հասնում։ And we know that in the Bible the Antichrist is called the lawless one. The one of no law. Եվ հիշում եք, որ նաև հակատրիստոսին ասպածաշում չէ կոչում է անորեն։ Եվ մենք էլ իվերջո հատարնում ենք այսպես առանց որենք հիմ արդիկ անորեններ։ Now, to help the Herodians survive, որպիսի հերոնդեսականները They identified with Roman and Greek culture. Որպիսի հերոդեսականներ ապրին, նրան հեմվում էին Greek and Roman culture. Հունական և Հրոմյական մշակույթին։ They were the enlightened people. Սրանք լուսավորված մարդիք էին։ They were higher than the primitive believers in Yahweh. Եվ սրանք ավելի բարձ էին իրենց դասում կան եհովային հավատացողները։ In Caesarea Philippi in Israel, կեսարյայի Caesarea Philippi. Philippi, Philippi, Caesarea. There were altars to Greek gods like Pan. Հունական աստված ներկայն և պեն դնեի։ Pan, yes. Մեկի անումը պեն էր։ Herod, Herod himself, Herod the Great, he built a pagan temple. Եվ հերով դես մեծ ինքը և աս հետանոսական տաճար է կարությունը։ Եվ 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 հետ Then later, Philip, another Herod, Tetrarch, he named it after himself. That's why they call it Caesarea Philippi. These Herodians, they looked for political favour with their Roman bosses. Եվ հետ ես կաղաքական առաջնորդները ուզում էին հրոմյան հումրծի առաջնորդների հետ լավ պոխարաբերություն ունենան։ By promising not to preach or impose their Jewish religion on them. Եվ խոստանում էին, որ իրենց կրոնական էդ, հրիական էդ, կրոնի որոշ կետեր չեին կարոզի։ They were very much like a lot of the church in the West today. Sometimes it's called the inclusive church. Inclusive. We include everyone. And it makes it sound so tolerant and good. We're inclusive. What's important is that we look cool. And it's a misunderstanding of the word tolerant. Եվ ես տեղ այս տոլերանտությունը, որ բարացի թարկման է, որպես համպերատարություն, արեր մուտքում և հնարավոր է նաև այս տեղ, տոլերանտություն մարդիկ ասում են և հասկանում են եսպես, ամեն ինչ լավ է, ամեն ընտիր է, արտակարք է, բայց իրական For me to tolerate something, I have to disagree or disapprove of it. Today in the West, we have an alternative, politically correct Jesus. Who is very happy to be one with Buddha, Shiva, Muhammad. Եվ այս մեր նոր ստացած Հիսուսը բոլորի հետ հարմարվում է, դա լինի բուդան, շիվան կամ մուհամենը։ He's very happy with that. Շատ ուրախ է։ And any alternative lifestyle, including LGBT. Եվ կամ համասերամորների կյանքներ էդ մեր ստացած Հիսուսը ընդունում։ This is the leaven of Herod. Եվ սա է հենց հերոն are Antichrist. They're both instead of the real thing. 
And ultimately against the real thing. And Jesus said, together they would persecute believers. And this is why they actually conspired together to take Jesus to the cross. And today, there are many strange and unlikely enemies who've become friends. So that they can devalue and discredit Christians. Isn't the scripture so relevant and up to date? It's true that leaven infiltrates our minds, our thinking. It becomes, uh, it becomes a mindset. And when it's reinforced, it becomes a stronghold. What is a stronghold? It's a place of security that we run to for safety. To and to defend ourselves. <laughs> and scripture says that these strongholds are raised up against the knowledge of Christ. They are stopped, they are built to stop people coming to the knowledge of Christ. And interestingly in Corinthians, they're called high things. Just like the high places in the Old Testament. To draw people away, anything but Christ. You can have anything, but don't have Jesus alone. God's Spirit is revealing these things to us today. As we are watchmen and intercessors. So instead, uh, it's important that we don't react to the darkness, but we respond to the light. We're not just people who see the bad things. We see what God is doing. And we embrace what you might call the leaven of the kingdom of God. The leaven of the kingdom of God. Flowing in us and out of us like rivers of living water. And we run to him who is our stronghold. We focus, we focus on him, our strong tower. The real thing. Not some replica. Replica. Not some copy. Or alternative. That's pretending to be faith in Jesus. In the Middle Ages in England, you can read of pretenders to the crown. Pretenders? Pretenders to the crown. The crown. king's crown. Uh huh. They, they hoped? Okay. They hoped, yeah. They were hoping to become king. Ah, Marty kind of who is the name? What did they can These people were scheming to become king. When really they had no right. In fact, remember the Jews said to Pilate, We have no king but Caesar. And 
We do only have one king. King Jesus. And we have no other ruler. We are loyal to him alone. We are found in him. He is the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. He who was lifted up on a cross. So that when we look at him, when we believe in him, I receive eternal life. A quality of life. Amen. Amen.